just successfully walked through the part of my lecture I called death, disease, destruction, and despair. <laughs> and we came out the other side, still breathing. Take a breath. We are about to describe now really good news. But in order to explain how good it is, I have to explain the really bad news first. And the really good news is we are on the short track to getting rid of GMOs from our food supply. Now, in the short term, we have to avoid it. It's still there. What's interesting is that when given a choice, animals avoid it. Over and over again, pigs and cows and squirrels and geese and Elk and deer, raccoons and mice and rats and chickens and dogs and buffalo all have been seen avoiding GMOs when given a choice. So we have to get humans up to the level of animals. <laughs> and to do that, we help. There's our, there's our pigs and animals. We have a non GMO shopping guide, which you have been handed when you came in. And it is brands that have removed GMOs and been enrolled in the non-GMO project. Now those are the brands. I'm going to give you a hint. There's a better shopping guide online and an iPhone store. Both free. Non-GMO shopping guide.com and the iPhone application Shop No GMO not just have the brands but they have the actual products, over 10,000 products. Now how do we get rid of GMOs? How do we get rid of GMOs? We think the way to get rid of GMOs is through a tipping point of consumer rejection. We know that that's the case, but we know it can, be, it can work because we saw already twice. In 1999, at a San Francisco conference, I mentioned that a biotech company projected a 95% takeover of all commercial seeds in the world within five years. Three weeks later, their schedule crashed. The gag order was lifted on a scientist who had discovered that GMOs were inherently dangerous. He was the greatest scientist in his field and given three million bucks by the UK government to figure out the protocols for testing GMOs that were supposed to be implemented into EU law. But when he discovered that GMOs caused potentially precancerous cell growth in the digestive tract, smaller brain, livers, and testicles, partial atrophy of the liver, and damaged immune system in just 10 days in his rats. He went public with his concerns, was a hero for two days at his institute until two phone calls came from the Prime Minister's office. The next day he was fired after 35 years and gagged with threats of a lawsuit. For seven months, he was mercilessly attacked, unable to respond. Seven months and one heart attack later, the gag order was lifted by the UK Parliament on February 16, 1999. On that day, and this is how I started the book Seeds of Deception, Susan comes to the door, and she opens the door, and she sees several reporters standing in front of her, and many more parking along the street. She said, you know, we can't speak about what happened. We may be sued, but it's okay now, a reporter from Channel 4 TV said. He's been released. Your husband can speak. Waving a piece of paper, she took the paper and said, Arpad, Dr. Arpad Fustai came over, was handed the paper, started reading it. As he was reading it, the reporter started filing through into the living room. But he didn't notice. He was reading on the letterhead of his former employer that the gag order had been released. He could finally speak about what happened about GMOs. He looked up and they started asking him questions. That's how we started the book. And he describes what happened. And they start reporting, and they continue reporting. Within two or three weeks, over 700 articles were written about GMOs. Within the first week, an editor said, it divided society into two warring blocks. It was this massive headline-grabbing food safety scandal that rocked Europe. And within 10 weeks, Unilever said, no more GMOs in Europe than Nestle's than everyone else. It was not the European Commission, it was consumers. Consumers saying no, and the food companies responding because they did not want to lose sales. But it was not a headline of 
Iraqi incident in the United States. It was described by Project Censored as one of the 10 most underreported events of the year here. So when McDonald's and Burger King and Nestle's and Hershey's take GMOs out of Europe, they continue selling us GMOs here. When we started educating people about the health dangers of genetically engineered bovine growth hormone, how many people have heard of that? It's Monsanto's created hormone that's injected into dairy cows to increase, increase milk supply. I heard from a former Monsanto scientist that three of his colleagues were looking at the milk from cows treated with bovine growth hormone. They found so much cancer-promoting hormone in the milk called IGF-1, they stopped drinking milk unless it was organic one by his own 